many worshippers in Ondo State in southwestern Nigeria. They entered the St. Francis Catholic Church in the town of Owo during a Sunday service, fired into the congregation, then kidnapped the priest as well as some other churchgoers. The incident in Nigeria is coming at a time when Ghana's uh, team had been warning of possible terrorist um, strikes in Ghana, waging a national campaign now dubbed See Something, Say Something. The Ministry of National Security has further stated that uh, it recently it identified the movement of suspicious persons in the hills of Bunkurugu, Nakmanduri district in the northeast region of Ghana, with similar intelligence coming out of Garu in the upper east region. How are these occurrences awakening our consciousness as a country as far as terrorism issues are concerned? And how are we to mobilize ourselves to mitigate, if not avert, a possible attack? You're watching GTV Breakfast. My name is Kafri Day. Our WhatsApp number is 055-556-1034. On Twitter, tweet at us at hashtag GTV Breakfast. My guests are security analyst and CEO of Security Warehouse, Dr. Adam Bona and government spokesperson on governance and security, Bachi Dankwa. Gentlemen, good morning. Good to have you here. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good morning and uh, good to be here. Excellent. Um, I'll start with you first, uh, Palgrave. So, monitoring what happened over the weekend in Nigeria, uh, what, what, what was the response, what was the reaction um, from your outfit, I mean, in terms of what we saw? And what we heard in the news. So, very good morning to you, yeah. Kafui, yeah. and um, to your beautiful viewers on the Nations Network. I believe that Nigeria has a very unique case, mm -hmm. um, which spans um, maybe in the very early part of 2002, when we noticed very well that um, terrorism had begun to grow. Um, Boko Haram had come, um, which um, they had stated that they were against Western civilization and Western sacrilege. And in 2015, we realized that um, Boko Haram had changed his name into the Islamic State in West Africa. Mm. Um, which the rebranding of some sort. Rebranding of a sort. Mm -hmm. And um, in the northeast um, of Nigeria is where they usually will perpetuate their actions. Um, usually they would have assassinations, they would have large scale of violence. Um, in 2010, I mean, up until date, they would go into the police stations, large targets, um, arrest and attack cities. Um, in Boachi, released close to about 700 inmates and 100 members of Boko Haram, released them. Um, they have attacked churches, they have attacked um, mosques um, over the years, um, two churches in Modagri, um, some recent past, um, George Plateau killed close to about 30 people. And their works are increasingly growing um, within Nigeria. Um, they predominantly, you find them work in the northeast, north central, central states um, in Nigeria. And um, their focus, I mean, over the years has been to attack government institutions and um, police institutions, individual stretches, and um, it's gradually been increasing, I mean, <clears throat> over, over the years. Um, I think that between 2011, they sought um, for amnesty um, so that uh, they, can, <laughs> they can continue to perpetuate their act. Um, that amnesty was declined two months afterwards. They caused one of the biggest attacks. Um, close to about 185 people died mm. um, so i mean in Kano. so the nigeria situation is extremely unique mm. um, they formed alliances um, very much um, with al-qaeda um, also formed alliances with al-shabaab in somalia um, so i mean gradually you see it's that, almost like um, a multinational absolutely, operation um, gradually you see business that growing very very much mm. um, and so the nigeria case is extremely very unique and i could go on and on with the various statistics but for us as a country i believe very well that um, over the past um, three weeks the government um, through the national security launched the citizen awareness campaign mm -hmm. um, which is something and for you to call 999 primarily because um, in terms of intelligence gathering right up from 2018 um, president Nanado Dankwe Kufuado chair of ECOWAS formed the Accra initiative which was to enable us share intelligence within the sub-region of West Africa having seen that um, most of our neighbors have been attacked um, I mean closest being Togo in recent times it means that Ghana is one of the only countries um, on the on the ticket um, yet to be attacked and uh, reasons why terrorists are coming into the various neighboring countries closer to the coast is as a result of the Gulf of Guinea for them to continually perpetuate their act of piracy 
and um, they also are looking for resources they are looking for our gold they are looking for our bauxite they are looking for our iron they are looking for our ore, aluminium and um, a number of resources that we have in country and so the surveillance that we picked over the weekend for which reason we had to um, immediately prompt the ghana police service and the ghana forces to ensure that they are on the ground continually keeping faith vigilance um, is, is one of such which continually means that our government is on the ground we are continually picking intelligence there are some intelligence that we are picking that will not even come into the public domain that we are working with um, but also to see that um, when it comes to the engagement of terror acts I mean it could be anyone within your neighborhood um, because they are not coming with clubs and um, sticks and guns as you will see ordinarily um, over the years um, terrorism has changed and transformed um, in many years and so um, as a country um, and also the counter-terrorism unit of the national security there are four key principles and cardinal points that we used to work the first is to prevent the act of terrorism to come into your country and so which includes the education which includes the campaign um, working with teachers working with civil society organizations working with religious bodies and um, muslim cleric and christian cleric and the catholic secretariat and also uh, making sure that all enhance are on board the second is really to preempt which is to really aware of the Torah acts like the indicates that I gave in terms of the character of Boko Haram and what happened in Nigeria is very sad but um, in the manner in which it took place you can clearly indicate that um, there are persons that are involved in um, Torah acts which can be characterized and associated to Boko Haram right um, and although then they also, haven't really, really found out who, it, who was it, yes. behind the although the, the they haven't really found out who is bombings. behind that killings but clearly you've seen that I mean over the years and um, continually Boko Haram will attack churches and mm -hmm. um, we have examples in Kano we have examples in Bakuri and um, on and on and on it goes they'll attack Muslims they'll kidnap children um, over and over again um, the, the last at, um, attacks of children were close to about 275 children that they attacked in about 2015, if you remember. The Chibo girls. Yes, the okay. Chibo girls mm -hmm. um, in, in, in that um, Borno state. Okay. So um, when, when, when we have prevented, I mean, in the conversations of prevention that we preempt, then the third is really to protect, continue, continually protect the integrity and the territory and then uh, finally to respond and um, in terms of the persons that we spotted um, in the northeast um, of Ghana going towards the mountains um, we are clearly um, protecting the integrity space um, within the environment and also ensuring that um, we are responding effectively so as it is now um, we want to alert the Ghanaian people that this is not to cause fear and panic but this is to let you know that um, the national security is hands on deck and is um, preparing to make sure that continually everyone is safe within the space of terrorism okay all right uh, thank you very much for your initial thoughts uh, dr bona um same question to you you can respond to anything that you've heard from uh, palgrave uh, but let's focus on on that particular uh, church attack should we be concerned here Ghana? oh yes uh, good morning and good morning to my colleague here and to your viewers. Mm -hmm. We should be concerned. Terrorism is not only really true. Uh, you know, it doesn't affect just good and bad people. It affects everybody. And it's not only taking place in developed countries. It's only taking place now uh, in developing countries. And if you look at the modus operandi of, you know, terrorists, uh, they, they the hardest and the more difficult target they are able to hit, uh, the more uh, noise they get to attract to themselves. And it's almost become uh, who can do the baddest and the worst of uh, terror, mm -hmm. can undertake the worst of terror attack. But if just like Paul Gray, you know, mentioned, you know, the issue of Nigeria is very unique. If you look at from the times of King Sarawiwa and, you know, Baf uh, Biafra, you know, and, you know, some persons in Nigeria trying to move away from the federal direction. And so you have too many disagreements and too many challenges in Nigeria. That probably will culminate into people trying to take arms and ammunition and, you know, attack the state, and which has... Uh, largely engulfed all of us. And so as far as I'm concerned, I would say uh, in Nigeria, most people are living, you know, well uh, because of terrorism in Nigeria. Because the more there are terror attacks, the more people sign contracts to bring in ammo to defend terrorists. 
and you know, you and I know that when it comes to issues of security, it's not everything that is discussed publicly. And there is, uh, it's, it's not something that one can hide. But the others have gone to prison in Nigeria for benefiting from the loot. They took money that they were going to use in pro procuring, uh, you know, fighter jets and all that, funded the money, chopped the money. And so as far as I'm concerned, uh, the more chaotic the sub-region is becoming, the more it looks like leaders around the sub-region are benefiting. And you can see, uh, you know, what is happening, the coups around, uh, you know, Burkina Faso and the likes around the Sahel. And so as far as I'm concerned, we should be uh, very concerned. And you can see they, there will be more attacks in the northeastern than anywhere in Nigeria. But most of it, you know, the Chubo girls and some of them attracted some amount of attention. But you can see the recent one in the Catholic Church and where it took place and all that. And the manner in which it took place, you know, sacrilegious. This, this shouldn't be happening. Is that the modus operandi, uh, attention seeking? Yes, attention seeking, mm -hmm. because then the more they are able to do that, the more they attract young people to their fold. The more they are able to do that. The more, because like I'm saying, uh, who is sponsoring these people? It's a question nobody is, is, is asking. He mentioned something about resources. Who, who, is, sponsoring who, who is sponsoring them? I mean, uh, there's been evidence in Nigeria that some big people in Nigeria sponsored them in the past. And even when you come to the sub-region, there's, uh, I mean, why do you think the France government had issues with the Nigerian government in the fight against uh, Boko Haram? You know, they had issues because then they thought that the certain things were not clear. And so as far as I'm concerned, the sub-regional leader should be looking at who is benefiting largely from the chaos we are currently uh, facing. So if you come to our own backyard, I would say that uh, we need to up our game. And I say we need to up our game in the sense that there has to be a more coordinated response with regards to how we deal with terrorism. You know, very well, we launched the... See something, the, say something. See something, say something. Mm -hmm. But the way in manner, uh, in manner it was done, I thought that we could have done it a bit better. And also, even the appointment of uh, ambassadors, I thought, I mean, and I have said it repeatedly that it shouldn't have happened. I haven't seen anywhere in literature or in practice where I say Kafri Day is an ambassador for terrorism. When you don't know who the terrorist is, mm. Kafri Day could just step out and he could be kidnapped. You get what I'm trying to say? And mm. these people, like I said, who doesn't know Kafri Day in Ghana? Maybe a lot of people know you. And so if you are able to inflict uh, pain in Kafri Day, then it becomes big news. Mm -hmm. And so uh, these are some of the things I think government, including my good friend here, should be, you know, concerned about. So that whilst we do this, we don't end up seeing people who are vulnerable. Because then you, I mean, when I was coming, I saw some ammo tanks in front. If you say Kafu Day is an ambassador, you better keep him in that ammo tank when he's going home. Because then you are not going to follow him home. And so mine is, the government is doing something, mm. but it needs to be more coordinated. And so let's not show any form of weakness. And so far, we haven't shown any weakness. Just that uh, certain mm. things are not well coordinated, and it's not all of it that uh, I'll be able to put out there. Because mm. then any... A form of weakness on our part and disagreement would expose us to, would expose us mm. to the bad people. Mm. Who are we trying to stop from infiltrating and hitting us? It's the bad guys. And who is a bad guy? It's difficult to tell because then uh, we are told some of them are here with us. Some of them might be coming in. But mine is that the, you know, unemployment is another thing we should be looking at because then the more uh, young wanting to be employed and you know probably yeah, because i've seen what's the name national service napco and all these people and these are some of the the channels the loopholes these bad guys explore and so i think that as a matter of agency government should quickly you know patch this uh, holes yeah. and i think i've heard also from the national security quarters where there seem to be some issues with funding 
because then uh, if you have tried the emergency number, some of us kept advocating for the emergency number because then uh, am I, was I going to call the 18555, the oh, normal nine, nine, nine. police line. Okay. But now we have a hotline okay. that is supposed to, the 999, that mm -hmm. when I call, uh, you know, a respondent would respond and ask me what have I seen, you know, ask me questions. On that note of the 999, I think I, I, we will try to do that right now. Yeah, you can try Okay, so we're going, to call, we're going to call 999 yes. right now and see what happens. Who yes. picks it up and, and, and just know, find out exactly. Because yeah, others so tried it. That. I also tried it, it. And, and there was a challenge. And mm -hmm. I thought that, well, that's not very good. But the truth is what that you What did you hear see, when you called? Oh, uh, I think uh, it didn't go through. Mm -hmm. I tried several. It didn't go through. Mm -hmm. it, I think it works. It works? I, I, well, I, I've, I've, I've tried, I've tried it. I've tried it several times. Test it live and see. And I think one of it, it went through, but it looks like uh, oh. I didn't get. So I think I, I do have. We just called nine nine nine. Let's see. Hello. Okay. Good morning. Hello. Are we on? Okay, we're gonna try try call. Let's and get through to nine 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 and see what 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 they'll say. Yeah, but go ahead. Yeah. So mine is that we need to be we need to criticize what is going on constructively, mm -hmm. like we are doing now. Mm -hmm. Because the idea that, you know, we need to be more emphatic with regards you to whatever wanna, we are doing. You want to talk to 999? Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, hi. Good morning. You, uh, hello? Good morning. Um, good morning. Yeah, uh, good morning. Hi. Good morning. Can you hear me? I help you. Yes, this is Kafui uh, calling from GTV. From GTV? Yes, indeed. Um, okay. uh, yes, you were just testing the 999 line. Yes, and um, what kind of pro issues do you have with uh, people? We heard about prank calls. I mean, yes, good morning. Yes, good morning. How are you? I'm fine. This is Kafui from GTV. Okay. Yes, we're testing the 999 line just to make sure that it works. Yeah, Kafui is working. Is, wor is, okay. is, is working. working. Is this a 24 7 line? Do we get you, um, if I call at 355 in the morning, will I get somebody? Exactly. Okay, I'll try. 24/7. Okay. Every time when you okay, so prank calls. How 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 are you dealing with prank calls? That one is on the high side. What are you um, doing? In a day, if we can take about ten thousand calls in a day. Ten thousand prank calls. Yes, about ninety nine percent is prank. Okay. And we use this opportunity to advise the public to stop pranking the system because. When you prank the system and the actual calls are supposed to come in, mm -hmm. you prevent them from coming through. Okay. We are here to save lives. Mm -hmm. So they should stop pranking the system so that the um, actual calls can come through. Okay. So since we started the See Something, Say Something campaign, uh, have you had any calls with respect to suspicious activity that you have passed on to uh, whoever needs to hear those, those, those pieces of information? Yes, we've been having calls. Okay. Actual calls coming through. Okay. Um, what's the protocol? When somebody calls in, what do you do? We have call takers seated and they will answer the call. If the system is busy, it means all the call takers are busy on mm. calls. Mm -hmm. So you need to wait for a while mm -hmm. for your call to come through. Okay. Is there, is there a requirement to, to ask for like, their identity, where they're calling from? What kind of questions do you ask the people? There are a lot of questions that we ask mm -hmm. when actually um, we attend to all the emergencies but when it comes through and is um, concerning terrorism there are questions that we will ask that where you are calling from what is happening there and what you've seen what is actually um, the people that you have observed what they are doing mm -hmm. and you give us the actual location and we ask you to observe further so that you give us the actual information so that um, the basic forces can come through. Okay. Do you have like a questionnaire with a list of questions you have to go through to determine what is being said to you? Exactly. And we've also trained the um, call takers on terrorism. So when you come through with the questions, what they need to know, the moment you come in and they realize that it pertains to terrorism, then there are certain questions that they will 
answer you. And the other things that we also do mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. um, attending to other emergencies, accident, crime, um, not more things, we also attend to them. Okay. Dr. Bonbona, any question you want to ask? How many calls can they pick at a time? How many calls can you pick at, at a particular time? In a day? No. At, 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 I mean, how Small many people time. are working the switchboard at any particular time? How many calls can they pick? We have 22 consoles, and every console, um, is, a call taker is seated behind it. Okay, so 22 consoles. 22 calls and, at a time. Yes, you can take 22 calls at a time. And call a person seated by, by, by. And how long are their shifts? How long do they work for before they hand over to the next person? Eight hours, but they break twice for break. Okay. Okay. And if I call at 2.45 tomorrow morning, you, I'll, I'll get a response. You will get it. Okay, Dr. Blaine, any, any more questions you want to ask her? Uh, so, because she uh, spoke about, uh, they will ask you to call back, yes. observe and call back. Yes. So, 22 calls at a time. Yes. If by the time you had relevant information and you couldn't get through, yeah. Is there a way? Do they get back to? Yes. Uh, because then, uh, you, why would you want me to call back? Why wouldn't you call me back? Can you can you call somebody back? Uh, yeah, we do call back. Okay. We do call, mm -hmm. but there are certain people like because of the prank. Some people will call with the information, and you know that this one is not actual call that the person is. maybe that is the system. Okay. All right. So we will try to let you observe and get the actual cases because we also have to also sit down and see if it is an actual call okay. or it's just a prank. All right. Okay, and for those of you who are wondering whether I'm just calling somebody's number and getting doing propaganda, <laughs> please, can you please uh, zoom this for me and see what number you see there? Yeah, so this is the number that was called, it was Palgrave's phone, you called it for 999. That's the number right there. Can you see it? Yes, it's 999. And I'm speaking to the person who is in charge. I've told you these, yes. these days, more questions. She's still no, there. But these days, these days, <laughs> work. So, uh, those who prank, yes, those who prank, is that is there is there a way to get back at them? Can you get, get back to people who prank and, uh, and, and then deal with them by the law? How do you deal with prank calls? We do, but most of them are kids. Oh, so kids. We normally call. Yeah, they are using parents' and, phones, um, so the parents can be prosecuted. Okay. Okay, so you call back, you call back and get to the parents and, and caution them not to allow the kids to, to, okay, all right, so it's mostly kids, it's mostly kids, okay, all right, it's on the higher side, so kids, I mean, the kids must stop pranking, so maybe there needs to be some, some education, so, on the, no, so, the kids. No, so, you know, Kafui, um, I, I think that we just need to, um, confirm like you have confirmed that the yeah. 999 works it works okay um i've called it several times and it works um, yesterday okay. i called it on all your tv stations and it works. radio stations and it, it works well, quick well, I, I wanted to get back to to to, to her work so what, what what message would you give to 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 Ghanaians who are listening to you right now with respect to this 999 call well, the order i can say for now is to ask the public to stop pranking the system mm -hmm. we are here to attend to emergencies to those who are in need. So if you keep on tranking the system, it means you are depriving those coming in with from reaching us. Okay. So we are telling the public to please stop pranking the system. Last question. Have you have you received any terrorism related calls today? <laughs> no, today no. When was the last one you received a call like that? <laughs> Yesterday. Uh, um Kafui. <laughs> Kafui, come on. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> that one you cannot. No, I have to ask a question. I'm ready to say you cannot. No problem. Kafui. But thank you. Thank you very much. And, and, and enjoy your day. Keep doing the work that you're supposed to do for us. We, we thank you so much. Thank you too. All righty. Bye-bye now. <laughs> okay, so that's it. 999 is right there uh, for the doubting Thomas's. It's there, right there. Thank you. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. So, yes. uh, so yeah. So, so that this, was a live test. That was a live test yes. that worked. Yes. But I think that there could be some limitation with mm -hmm. regards to how many we can pick at a time. 22, she said. 22. Yes. You think there should be more? Uh, I think it should be unlimited. Mm -hmm. Unlimited. Because sometimes one person, uh, you have to engage mm -hmm. for a longer period. Mm -hmm. And so if probably he can go through. Mm -hmm. But once he goes through this room, well, there are several people here. It means that if you look at the population of Ghana, we should be doing some amount of averaging. 
you know, but I think that uh, it's good we have just tried mm -hmm. uh, and like asked the, yeah. the relevant questions. Mm -hmm. And if uh, he's here, I mean, he's a government spokesperson mm -hmm. on security, mm -hmm. governance, and, governance and security. Yes. Yes, I think that, you, sh you know, I'm sure government is listening. And if government is not listening, it's here. So you should listen to us. <laughs> they should, they, we should, let's have a console yeah. that can accommodate more than the 22. More than the 22. Okay. Because this is a very good test we yes, just yeah, ran. Live. I mean, uh, if anyone thought this was annoying, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It was good for people to know it was working. Exactly. But I, I think that there shouldn't be any excuse for anyone to prank the system. Yeah. It doesn't matter if the person is. Children yes. who are mostly the and, prankers. And, and usually, so the have to get those phones uh, so the uh, uh, usually the police will be at your door. Yeah. They will call you and let you know your child has committed ABCD. Okay. Because I would have to be responsible for, for what my children do yeah. Yeah. at home. And the phone is registered in and your name as an adult. And the phone is registered in your name exactly. as an adult. Yeah. But if we make excuses for, you know, uh, children, then we are making excuses for their irresponsible parents. Because I will not allow my grandchild or my child at home no. to have access to my phone let alone dial 999 and of course with a password and, and, you can still dial 999 so and, and, the, and the truth is that some, you know some parents yeah. can be reckless a yeah. parent can dial the number and ask the child to talk mm. okay so mine is that it should be let's put in punitive measures if the number that dialed the number who is the number registered to then we deal with that person. we deal with a person okay. right. next time or else we are going to run into problems. And Definitely. so I think that uh, it's a good test we just run. Mm -hmm. The system should be expanded to accommodate more. And also, uh, you know, it looks like if the prank calls keep coming, then it means that people like us who genuinely want to try we'll the system get will not get through yeah, and we yeah, will yeah. say that, oh, there is a it's challenge. You get it. And so we should deal with that. Now coming back to the challenge of terrorism that is engulfed all of us, we should be more coordinated. When I say more coordinated, uh, the issue in the north, the Nankanduri area, yes. where mm -hmm. I saw that video about a month or six weeks ago, and I think the National Security Ministry issued a release, and there was, uh, I think, a statement from an indigenous of the area who actually said it didn't, you know, the place doesn't look like the Nankanduri area. And I thought that, you know... Okay, I'll call my answer. Say again? Okay, no, no, no. no. So, so, so we're getting feedback that people think that it's because uh, uh, the, the, uh, it's just Pa Gray's phone. Uh, uh, so I'm going to call him. You know, phone. it's the reason why I actually gave it to him. It's the reason why I gave it to him to have the interview. Because, because even if the call... Even, I, I, I just like that. Even if the call comes from my console, they will not believe it. So I'm going to call from my phone. I'm going to call from my phone. I just love that. I'm going to call from my phone. I'm going to call from my phone. Yes, please do. Please do. So I'm calling from my phone. I'm calling from my phone. My phone, all right, okay. So that's this is my phone, okay. <laughs> you have it. Emergency number, it's good. Well, it's ringing. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. That will work. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Are people are great, eh? yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. So it's it's ringing. It's ringing. When you are done, I also try. And you also try. Oh, oh, it, it works. It no, works. I think, I think we need to. It does, it does work. It does work. It does work. Yeah. It does work. Yeah. So I'm calling. So, and it's not just I, for I, me. I, I, I am also it's, going to call some. I'm calling so, right now. Uh, I'm calling at the same time. Okay. Let's see who picks <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a live test. Okay. You got jazz. Well, uh, <laughs> I got jazz. Okay. I don't know. Maybe you get that by jazz or something. <laughs> I think someone has picked. Someone has picked okay. Doctor Bonnet. Okay. So I am Doctor Dambona calling from. Uh, we are on GTV live. Breakfast Show Live. Uh, we use one of our colleagues' phone, but he's a spokesperson for government. So and then there's Daniel another one that no. has picked. So uh, we tried. We tried again to see what our two work. Yeah. Thank you very much, my dear. The second one has picked. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Is this nine nine nine? This is nine nine nine, right? <laughs> okay, so yes, two two yes. people, okay. it's, it's working. All right, so okay. thank you very We're much. We're on GTV Live. My name is Paul Graham. Watching thank our government. We are just testing. You better get through. Uh, so I better get through. Better you, get so get two through. people, two people, it's working. Okay, 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 I got the jazz too. I got the jazz too. You better <laughs> get through. The jazz is the symbol. So, <laughs> so this is mine. You better get through. Yes. <laughs> 
I pray you get I, I like this Kenny G, but it better stop so somebody picks it up. I yeah. said, <laughs> Yeah. No, we've got to test these things. Hello? Okay. <laughs> we better pick it up. <laughs> All right. What are we going to say something very nasty? <laughs> <laughs> You seem to be enjoying the... the I love jazz. <laughs> <laughs> this is my music. My go-to music is jazz. But we want a voice. Okay, so it's going on loop now. Hello? Hi there. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, he responded and he said hello and that was it. Okay. So you're going to try? This, this is Valerie's phone. Okay. Also okay, Valerie's phone. <laughs> Valerie's phone. The journalist. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we, we just want to Maybe they'll sure. pick iPhone. They don't pick Samsung. No, this is iPhone. This is iPhone. This is Samsung. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I mean, I mean, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Kafui. I'm calling from GTV. We are doing a show on uh, See Something, Say Something, and we're testing the line. We're testing that. Good, good morning. My name is Kafui. I'm yes. calling from GTV. A conversation on uh, the See Something, Say Something uh, terrorism uh, media campaign. And we're testing the lines to make sure that the line goes through. Okay. So the line. Yes, the, the line has gone through. It has gone through. So I'm cool. No problem. All righty. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your day. Oh. You too, sir. Bye bye, madam. Bye. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> All right, so the lines work. Yes. Yeah. We Thank tried you. on different numbers. Yes. It's not just a secret. The, the, the government spokesperson. <laughs> Everybody else's line. Mine has to go through. But he picked up and then had to go off. But we get the point. Now, a couple of issues that uh, Dr. Bola brought up. Uh, criticisms of the see something, say something. And full disclosure, I'm one of the. the, the, the oh, you are one of them. I'm one of them. Yes. So, have you exposed me to danger? Um, well, to be honest, I don't think we have um, exposed you to danger. Um, the entire country um, is on to make sure that everyone is protected. And uh, we continually prevent the acts of terrorism in our country. And so um, you are protected um, as much as every other citizen in this country is protected. Um, continually, we have um, the police on the road. Uh, mounting mm -hmm. barriers, doing routine checks um, to get to identify persons who want to continually perpetuate um, acts of violence. Um, in the evenings as well, we have barriers that are mounted. Um, I drive sometimes as late as 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and I see that um, most of our barriers are working. I leave home as early as about 4.30 a.m., and I still see that most of the barriers are mounted. And so everyone... Um, is not at risk, mm -hmm. but uh, we should continually just ensure that um, as we hold the conversation around see something, say something, mm -hmm. um, you make the calls that are relevant. And when you call, you may not even necessarily need to mention your name because your identity is protected. Situation. And I also need to come to the defense of um, the 999 call center that, yes, when you do call and they ask you to observe and um, they, you need to call back or they'll call you back, mm -hmm. it does not mean that your information you have shared has not reached the security mm -hmm. personnel and the services. You are aware that on a regular basis, um, these gutters and um, there's this radio phone and the communication is always ongoing around mm -hmm. to be able to clearly identify where there is a worry for which reason we need the presence of the police. Um, I also need to be able to state that um, on prank calls and um, the fact that um, the high number are children, um, much as we would want to encourage parents to keep their children away from phones, it's important that um, we also do not discourage them because most of the times you would find children who would easily and readily be able to see something and say something and so we need to be able to put it in that parameter i can understand the abuse to understand but i mean if you have elderly children um who are about seven eight nine ten um, school
school and they're observing certain things and i mean they talk to their <coughs> teacher and they make a call i think that we should encourage the good practices of children who use the 999 to reform to inform a report terror act and then also discourage children who use the 999 just for prank calls so mm -hmm. we need to be able to put that in proper perspective because research has shown that all around the world if you want certain key information you would readily find it from children who are risk averse oh. and who would readily want to share it without any hesitation whatsoever compared to an elderly person okay N now just back to what happened in nigeria with this this dastardly church attack um and there was a suggestion on uh, this show yesterday that uh, almost immediately security around churches and mosques needs to be beefed up cctv have to come up at places where people gather uh, so that we can actually be able to spot movements and and help with intelligence gathering when things like this happen. I, I, is it time, Dr. Bona, where you have large gatherings of people to have mandatory CCTVs, markets, uh, churches, mosques, malls? Yes, I mean, it's, it's long overdue because then terrorists don't act randomly. They will come and you know do surveillance they would move around research has shown i mean crime in general if someone wanted to do anything here the person might have f find a way to you know School go around first, yeah. you know look at how the the layout is how do i get out how do i come in where do i hit you know and all that and so if you have either uh, CCTVs that are installed and being monitored or CCTV that are uh, just for surveillance and for playback purposes at least you are able to once a while play back your videos and see who came in who didn't come in and all that it is very important so I would say mm -hmm. that uh, when you hear that Britain is the most uh, CCTV policed you know republic or I mean states you it's not every cctv that is installed in britain is not installed by the government okay but there is a policy to ensure that as many people as possible install these systems because then but you see uh, one that is why i spoke about coordination i would have i i will, i have cctvs in my home my office and everywhere but the national security doesn't know i have cctv in my home mm -hmm. In other places, you must inform. Okay. You don't take permission. You once inform. you inform, it's like going for a demonstration. Once you are installing a <laughs> surveillance, <laughs> once you are installing a surveillance <laughs> system, that is going to cover a public like the road mm -hmm. or your. You must inform so that they would add it to their data. Uh -huh. So if there was a crime, and you know whoever heard about the crime said the person used this road. They go onto their database and check how many cameras are installed on this stretch. Then they can get information. Then they can say, okay, there's ah, a camera there. Then okay. they come. Okay. You are supposed to give them those footages. If you don't give it to them, you are going to be punished in a way. But we don't have it. And so we, we need have that. to. We need, need that. we need that system. We need, we need to have a policy. You know, some of us pushed over the years, more than 10 years, to, to you know, help to say, let's have... A national security policy we now have it but i think you should go through some tweaking to ensure that where we find ourselves we are not in normal times so that mandatorily just like the uh you need is it a fire certificate mm -hmm. to if you are going to operate a public building or something yeah. that, and so let's begin to revise some of these safety and security protocols okay. you want to operate let's say uh, a chop bar we want to ensure that the people who are coming in are safe. And so install some of these things. In the end, government alone doesn't need to spend so much to install CCTVs all over. But if you look at it, we will be able to bring down the ratio of, you know, between what do you call it, uh, citizen CCTV would come down. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, you realize that by and large, uh, a chunk of the CCTVs, are installed by government. Government alone cannot shoulder the burden. And so let's have a policy framework. The other thing is I have spoken about monetization of the security services in this country. We haven't done that that much. If you are lived in Britain, you know, for... And I will tell you that the British, the Metropolitan, the British police make so much money from... 
points, okay. you park wrongly, mm -hmm. you and so they make so much money. You, you know, speed on, you know, you go on uh, the streets, you know, certain you are not supposed Wrong to be more, than, more yeah. than 30 kilometers mm -hmm. an hour, you are doing 40, <coughs> they find you. you know, they find you, mm -hmm. you know, and so at the end of the day, the burden is not on the central government to finance, you know, your recklessness. You would finance those who, for instance, come in here. I needed to stay in traffic. I don't jump. I just want, I try to be disciplined. But you have other drivers who think, you know, excuse me, you are stupid. And so they just jump. So they must fund their So own. you would fund, you know, your own, excuse right. me, to say your stupidity. Yes. Once, the more we do that, we would have enough resources to tackle terrorism and all these things we are talking about. And so, yes, it is... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, largely, something we should be doing apart from the CCTVs. I want us to do a thing where we should have, for instance, large gatherings. Some of these churches can have more than 3,000 people. We need to begin to encourage them to put in full body uh, walkthrough scanners. The walkthrough scanners that you have at the airport. We need to begin to have them. And so, one of the things I would want to also see is. These religious-based uh, organizations and entertainment centers, those who are into events, to get expert advice. Because then, as we are here, I am sure you have a lot of corners that if anything happened, it could, it could add, you know, act as an escape route for people who might be in the building. But unfortunately, uh, when you look at the, the architecture of most of these buildings, uh, you know, we don't do that. I, I mean, so as part, of, roots. I, I, as part of my work, yeah. you know, I, I'm also, I also double as the vice chairman of the Chamber of Construction yeah. in the country. And one of the things is working with architects to ensure that when you are designing these, because usually architects and engineers would, when you are designing them, put in whatever drawings you have, escape routes, right. you know, because this building you would have, I can do a survey of this building, I'll tell you that if this building was to be attacked, half day, this would be uh, the, the most, the safest place you should be. Mm. But probably the architect would not know. But once we continue to coordinate these activities, then we will not be opening ourselves up for these things. So CCTVs, I think that uh, those who are listening, the, the churches, the metal scanners, yeah. we have them in different grades. Body scanners. Yeah, but uh, we have them. Yeah, okay. Don't just go. Usually people, you know, over here, we like everything cheap. Don't go because some of the body, the metal scanners, the handheld ones, some of them uh, are not able to read smaller, minute. You get a high-grade one, okay. that it doesn't matter how you hide it. You, find you pad it. All right. Because people can pad them, and when you scan, you won't see, you won't see anything. Okay. So I think that we we'll use this uh, is as part of the sensitization. Let's not uh, sit and think that government will not be able to do anything. I, I will not be able to do all. Citizens should get involved, but government should coordinate well the activities of, uh, you know, us coming together to ensure we are all safe in this country. Fun, fantastic way to end your submissions, Dr. Adam Bona, who is the CEO of Security Warehouse and Security Analyst. Uh, Paul Grave, I'll give you the last word. Two minutes for me. Well, just to um, say that the citizen awareness campaign, see something, say something, is continually ongoing. If you see something unorthodox within your area, maybe someone has come to park his vehicle, you don't know who the person is, you need to immediately call 999. We've tried the system. It works. If you are in your church and you see some persons walking in, people parking their vehicles, um, the car attenders are not there. Someone is trying to open a vehicle. You don't know who it is. Um, just make sure that you alert um, the security by calling 999. If you're a church, make sure that you're installing the CCTV cameras. If you're a mosque, make sure you're installing CCTV cameras. If you have a shopping mall, make sure you're installing CCTV cameras. Just make sure that you are aware and sensitive of your environment. If a garbage collector comes to pick your garbage and an unorthodox mm. has stayed longer, um, than before. You need to immediately tell the person to either move the garbage from there or you call the police to be able to come and attend to the person. Mm -hmm. We are having this conversation entirely with the Ministry for Information um, who has deployed the ISD into the various local communities um, to ensure that our chiefs are well informed, our MCs are well informed, local assembly leaders are well informed. So if you have any issue, you live in Mangwase, whichever village that you live in in this country, if you see anything that you like to say and you don't even have a phone, just make sure you go to the assembly member or you go to so that you can make this information aware.
Thank you so much, Palgrave yeah. Bwachi Dankwa is a government spokesperson on governance and security. It's part of the whole See Something, Say Something campaign. We're trying to get our, ourselves sensitized so that we can uh, have a coordinated, uh, all-inclusive, all-embracing approach to dealing with the threat of terrorism with our eye on what's happening. He didn't in, talk about the fact that in, in the government is not giving them money. Uh, uh, is government giving National money? security is complaining they don't have money. Oh, really? A whole national security? whether they have the money. You have money. Government is taking care of us. Are you giving them money? <laughs> government is taking care of us. They are complaining they don't have money. So government, I want them to... Government, government is taking care of us. They are complaining they don't have money. Government is taking care of us. Is it enough? Government is... It's good enough for us... It's good enough for us to be able to ensure that we maintain... The no, it's not. Of the because they've complained. I mean, I have checked. Uh, they've complained that Charlie no. cash in back. Uh, she said they're a bit, a bit bad here. Cash in him back. Sikawa. Sikawa. <laughs> All right, okay. Thank you. And we've got conversations, not just money, but conversations uh, to uh, wrap up today's show. Fourth World Food Safety Day, and in the, in the next couple of minutes, Valerie will sit down with Jocelyn from the FDA to look at all the matters around food safety. I'm sure Mawako will be there somewhere, so you stay. Don't go anywhere. Zero five 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 six ten thirty four is the WhatsApp number. Hashtag GTV Breakfast. I'm still thinking about the live test, and you people didn't believe that it was nine 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 because it was Pargrave's phone. Oh, oh, Nipa doesn't need. Thank you. Keep watching. This is GTV Breakfast. Don't go anywhere. I like it. <laughs> I was here for me, Dean, the Nanama make ground. They will buy a tuny dean, see something, say something. A dress, eh? So, who be beer? Who so so say? A best say, ya sum gia. Nyako could row. Neck. And then, yes, he see something, say something. If he say, if I ain't in Nayako. Say something, if you see.